Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Sarah. I work for Kenneth Association in the marketing department and I will be your host today. Uh, and at today's session, we'll show you how to realize the Canon switching function in EDS professional uh, using Canvas Virtual. For those who are not familiar with Canvas Virtual, it is a Windows application that represents a Canvas installation. As its name suggests, it's not a physical installation, but uh, it behaves like one. You can use it to test and play with the Canvas and the ETS. Uh, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat function. We'll try to answer all of them at the end of this webinar. A recorded version of this webinar will be available, so you don't have to take notes uh, unless you really <laughs> want to. Um, now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenter today, my colleague Vasilis, who is one of our engineers, also the leader of the tools team at the Canex Association. Uh, Vasilis, now I will turn it over to you. Hi, Sarah. Thank you very much for the for your invitation. Hello, everyone. I would also like to thank you for joining us today. I hope that you learn something new and foremost, you stay healthy, especially those difficult days. I would like to start with the overview, as I usually do with my presentations. I try to cluster them in different parts. So here we see the different parts of the presentation, four in total. Part number one. Uh, a short explanation about KNX Virtual and how to get it. Part number two, we will have a quick overview of the KNX Virtual devices and how to establish a connection between KNX Virtual devices and ETS Professional. Part number three, we will create the switch function and we will download it to the KNX Virtual devices live. And last but not least, part number four, we will use Group Monitor for some basic device diagnostics. In general, our today's goal is to show you how you can realize the basic KNX function switching with EDS Professional with the help of our KNX virtual devices. In order to show in practice how to create the KNX basic function switching, we will need some KNX devices and of course our software EDS Professional. KNX virtual is actually a device simulator that runs on Windows and simulates twisted pair KNX devices such as push button, switching actuator, dimming actuator, and so on. Therefore, we do not need physical KNX devices for this presentation, but only our virtual devices are sufficient. At first, we developed KNX virtual for us internally at KNX Association. However, uh, seeing the tremendous amount of requests from our community, but also its very high potential, we have decided to make it public and enrich it with more features. It's of course free of charge for everybody and one can get it via MyKNX by placing an order. Don't worry, even if it requires an order, an order, you will not be charged anything at the end of the process. Once you go through and complete the ordering process, KNX Virtual will be made available to you directly in your MyKNX account under the section My Products. Then click the download button and download it. Once it is downloaded, extract the content of the, of the zip file to your desktop and run it. It does not require any installation and it's of course virus free as long as you get this file from us, from my KNX. I think we said enough for KNX Virtual. If you would like to find out more information about it, do not hesitate to visit its website at virtual.knx.org. Great, so let's actually start with the, uh, the actual presentation. After opening the KNX Virtual, double click on the KNX Virtual Exe file, we see the welcome screen. In order to proceed with the next step, we have to click the settings menu on the upper left corner. In this view, we can configure the settings for the virtual KNX IP interface that we will use in order to access our virtual KNX installation, which consists of KNX virtual devices. You can change the IP address and the IP port, the multicast address, as well as the individual address of the interface. 
please note that since the individual address 1.1.255 is allocated to the interface, then this address cannot be used as individual address for other devices. For this presentation, we're going to use a default configuration and simply accept everything without any modification by clicking the OK button. Then we will be forwarded to the main view of KNX Virtual. After having set up the interface configuration, we are going to see the different device views that KNX Virtual implements. Click the View menu item on the upper left corner. That opens the list of different views. For the switching function, we are only going to use the base view and the devices view. Therefore, to save some time, I will only show those two views. I will start with the devices views, where all the currently implemented KNX devices can be found. In fact, what we can do in this view is to activate and deactivate the programming mode of the devices as well as their uh, individual address, to see their individual address. The code which is on top of the devices is actually their order number by means of which we can identify them later on when looking for them in the online catalog so that we can add them in our project. For the switching function, we will only use the push button PBB02 and the switching actuator SAB01. In the base view, we see the user interface of the following devices. The push button here on the left side, which has eight channels, each of them having two rockers. Each rocker includes also a red highlighting to indicate the status feedback. On the right side on top, we see the switching actuator which has also eight channels, to which there are eight lamps connected. When a channel is black, it means that the lamp is switched off. When it's orange, it means it's switched on. By clicking on a channel, we can indicate whether a consumer of this channel is defective or not. When it's defective, the message kaput is shown. We use a German word for that, but we think that during the years it has become really international as a word to indicate that something is broken. Clicking again the lamp, it restores its status. Below the switching actuator, we see the dimming actuator and the blinds actuator. However, to save some time in this presentation, we will skip the functionality presentation and we're, since we're not going to, to use them for the switching function. Now, let's go to our project in ETS and let's add the push button PBB02 in the corridor of our project. And the, uh, let's also add the switching actuator in the cabinet of our project. To do so, uh, we have to uh, click the add devices from the respective area, as you can see here and find those devices from the catalog under the manufacturer KNX Association. We have to ensure that we select the correct device by checking its order number here with what is indicated in the devices view in the KNX Virtual. Otherwise, we will be confronted later on when trying to download the application, of course, with an error message indicating that the application we tried to load is incorrect. So as you can see, to add the devices in the project, we simply drag and drop them from the catalog to the respective area in, uh, in the building structure. As I, as I said, you have to compare the order number from the catalog that you see on the left side with the order number that you see in the devices view in KNX Virtual. Those two should match. In KNX, in order to configure the KNX installation, principally one has to link the so-called group objects from devices together. In this case, we will need some objects from the push button and the switching actuator as well. I'm going to use channel one from the push button, and which means that the first two rockers on top are going to be involved in the function, as well channel one from the switching actuator, which means that the first lamp from the left is going to be operated. So I select them both, and then I call the context menu by right mouse click, and then I click the link with option. 
for your information, there are several ways to link group objects to group addresses. I'm only going to show one of them here for simplicity. So I'm going to uh, link the uh, to create a new group address. Uh, I click the tab New and I create I add the uh, identifier 001 and the name for my group address E1. And then I click OK, of course, so that the group address is created. You see now that those two group objects are linked together via the group address 0 slash 0 slash 1, and the name of the group address is E1. Obviously, that's not enough. I need, of course, to program the devices, and I'm going to start with the switching actuator. The first thing that I need to do, since this is a completely new installation, is to program the individual address of the devices. Currently, they all have their default one, which is 15.15.255. That means that I actually have to perform a full download for that device so that everything is downloaded. And, yep, I select the full download. After having downloaded a device, if there are any modifications needed, I can choose a partial download so that the download is faster. So I click the full download and ETS is going to do the necessary, which is a request to me to press the programming button. Therefore, I need to go back to the devices view and put the device in programming mode. And this is what I'm going to do. I just click, okay. As said before, this is the programming button, so I'll click it. It's lit. The individual address is already programmed, and you see that the download is in progress. Done. So we are already in a position where we can actually do a first test with our switching actuator. And that can be done via one of the ETS diagnostic tools, the group monitor. First, I will bring the Kenix virtual devices in front so that we have both software on the same screen. I will start the group monitor by clicking the diagnostics button and then start and then select the group address we have created via the group address explorer button, which is that one. The group address we're looking for is the 001. I selected it and then click OK. And then we can do the first test. From uh, this drop down, I can select the value I would like to trigger. And since our lamp is off, I'm going to select the on value. And then click, of course, the right button so that the value is sent to the bus. I expect this lamp here on the right, the channel one, to be switched on. So let's write. And as expected, we can see here this lamp is lit. The telegram that we uh, have sent was on. And if we send another telegram that with value off, then we will see that telegram in the monitor as well. So we send the off telegram and obviously the lamp is switched off. Congratulations, we have a first function in KNX, although is not yet complete. Let's complete it. We wanted to have this function operated via the push button, so indeed one more thing to do is to also program this device with a full download. We have to go again to the devices view, activate the programming mode of the push button, and then trigger a full download from ETS. You also see that the individual address of the push button is assigned already and the application program is being downloaded. It takes some time. And you also see the telegrams running in the monitor during the download. We could have stopped the monitor in this case, but it doesn't harm. After the download is completed, we are indeed able to switch on and off the lamp via the base view and the rockers from the push button. Choop, choop, on, off. Furthermore, we can also see the telegrams which are exchanged when operating the lamp via the push button. Directly in the monitor, you see. 
indeed, we see that the telegrams were sent by the device with individual address 111, which is the push button. And if we trigger the off value you see from the monitor, then you see that indeed the lamp is on and you see that the telegram comes from the individual address 1.1.255, which is the address of the interface. And that's it. So far, we control one aspect of the switching function, which is the control of the actual load. We are now going to control the second aspect, which is the, uh, the feedback of that function, so that the information that comes from the actuator and goes into the push button. Let's extend this function. We would like to have feedback for the switching operation, which means that we would like to see the status of the lamp reflected somewhere as feedback. Let's have a look again at channel one of those two devices. We will see that there is no other group object available. So obviously we're missing something here. This is a, always a clear indication if something is missing. Just go to the parameters of the device and add whatever is necessary. For the push button, I, when I go to the parameters page, I, and click, of course, the parameters tab, I can find out that indeed the functionality was set to switching no feedback. So if I change back to uh, switching feedback black red and go back to the group objects, I will see that there is uh, an additional group object added here uh, for uh, the push button. Okay, good. We do the same for the switching actuator. We go to the parameters and just change the feedback option selection to info on off and go back to the group objects tab to see what happened. Again, we have to link those two additional group objects together via the group address. We select them and we link them together via the group address 002 and e, we call that E1 status on off. And you see they are linked together. What we still need to do is to program the devices again in order to activate on them the extra functionality. As said before, a partial download is sufficient because individual address is already programmed together with the application program. To save some time, I will select both devices and perform a partial download. You see the devices are being downloaded. The download is a bit faster this time. So the push button is already done. Now the switching actuator. Also in progress. Take some time. So, after the download has been completed, we can see that if we manipulate the rockers, the colors of the text on the button becomes red, which indicates that the lamp is switched on. Clicking the left rocker, the color of the text on the button becomes black again, which indicates that the lamp is switched off. Furthermore, I will start the monitor so that we can see the message exchange between the push button and the actuator. monitor okay so we can see that if we manipulate the rocker a telegram from the device 1.1.1 and the group address 001 is sent to the bus with value on and then right after there is another telegram coming from the device 1.1.2 and group address 002 which is the group uh, with the switching actuator now, we are going to simulate the broken lamp. Then we also expect that the actuator behaves accordingly. So in a broken lamp, you see we double, we click the lamp to simulate the broken functionality. The actuator sends the telegram directly to the bus that there is a problem. There is no electrical consumer there, no light. And of course, it has to update channel one of the push button. Now the lamp, is restored back again and we can operate the actuator via the push button again. So 
when the kaput appears on the screen, which means the lamp is broken, even if we press any of the rockers of the push button, there is no reaction from the actuator. Once we clear the, the problem there, once we rectify the problem, then we can operate the switching actuator again. And here we are. We have everything set up. We have the switching function completed. So I think uh, I'm, uh, I'm done with my presentation. I hope that you uh, enjoyed the presentation. Um, I don't know whether my colleague Sarah would like to uh, say a few words here. Um, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the chat function uh, is for you to raise questions because uh, the, yeah, it's a perfect time when you want to you know get the answer straight from our webinar uh, our presenter. This is uh, the best chance, so I encourage you to use that function. And uh, yeah, before uh, we go to Q and A, and while we're still waiting for the questions to come up, I would like to remind you that uh, there are uh, quite some webinars scheduled, uh, more about the virtual as well. So today we cover the switching, and then there are dimming blinds and new features and novelties coming up as well. If you haven't registered for the webinar, so please go to our website for that. And uh, we know that, you know, uh, Canada's webinar is actually hugely popular. So if you are not successful with all the uh, sessions you are interested in, uh, just pop us an email and uh, we make sure that even though you cannot join the live session, you, afterwards you can receive the recording uh, and the PDF presentation. Uh, afterwards so uh so far um so far we yeah i have been closely monitoring the questions like yeah one person asked whether this uh, webinar is recorded yes it is it will be sent to everybody later as well um so uh, as a matter of fact I haven't uh, seen anything that's uh, really re uh, related to the operation of the virtual. Apparently, it seems uh, quite easy, and it is actually easy. I think you did a very good job uh, presenting this. Yeah, here we have a, uh, have a question uh, about how can I get ETS to do the same as you just did? I already have a KNS virtual. Um, strange question. That's not really clear. You get, uh, you download ETS, the demo version even. You don't need the license for that. So because we only have two devices in that project, so the demo can have maximum five devices. You simply go to myknx, my.knx.org, and you download ETS demo from the download section, and okay. then you can continue. Okay, very well. Uh, next question is the broken light function available in all devices? Hmm. That's a, a very tricky question. Uh, in fact, I cannot answer that question. Uh, you know, KNX is very flexible in terms of functionality and each manufacturer is independent and can implement any function one wants. So I cannot say whether this is implemented or not. I'm pretty sure that most of the switching actuators nowadays have a detection, a fault detection for the consumer. But this is only an assumption. I cannot answer with yes or no. But you can see that this possibility exists in KNX. So manufacturers are available, are, are free to implement that. Okay, great. Um, I see no more questions at the moment. Maybe people need to actually uh, you know, play with Canis Virtual by themselves and uh, have questions later, that's usually uh, the case. So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody again for joining us. And if you have uh, any questions later on, please just send us an email. The email address is showing on the screen. And uh, yeah, with this, we're, we're gonna wrap up this webinar and uh, we wish you a very good day. And uh, thank you again for joining us.
Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.